Hey everyone, in this video I'm gonna show you how to place wall finishes uh, by using Dynamo and uh, it's gonna be so versatile uh, to the extent that we will be able to place all types of wall finishes in just one click. So let's get started. So I'm gonna be using Dynamo for it but what do we need to have in Revit before uh, jumping into Dynamo. So let's create just a simple, just some walls. I'm gonna be using the shortcut WA and uh, let's create some some generic wall and uh, let's set height to level 2. So you can create and I'm gonna be using the rectangle. You can create some sort of a wall like that and um, the next thing what you can do is to create a a room tag for it so I'm gonna be using the shortcut RM so you can place the room over here by using this uh, by using this command and um, if you try to explore all of the parameters that it has it's it's really a lot so here as you can see you have wall finish uh, base finish ceiling finish and actually by the end of this video you will not only understand how to create wall finishes but actually all of these ceiling finishes base finishes and so on and so forth so uh, our next goal is to understand uh, what kind of a wall finish we want to use so i've created already this wall i'm going to be using gypsum wall so i'm going to be using gypsum wall and I've set the thickness to 10 millimeters. So, yeah. And uh, here, what you can do is to, one thing that you need to do is to change that wall finish to gypsum wall. That is the one I'm gonna use. It's just a uh, text actually over here, but we will turn that into a wall in Dynamo. So yeah, everything is, is set to jump into Dynamo. So let's fire up Dynamo. Let's wait for a minute. Go to new and uh, let's get started. So what I like doing first things first is to understand what I want to create. So I want to create a wall, right? You can type here wall and just try to find what you want. But I really like the way of exploring all of the things that we have. So if you jump into Revit and uh, if you find elements, if you go into elements and if you scroll down, uh, you can find here wall. And here you have two options how you can create wall. So you can create a wall by curve and height and by curve and levels. So I want to go with by curve, height, level and wall type. Actually all of these tools that we have. So and if you try to explore like what you need to have is a curve so curve is basically here we have four curves in terms of we have one line because dynamo uh, in dynamo just a simple line is a curve so so yeah and uh, how we can extract these lines from from Revit to dynamo we have a command that goes like select model elements uh, oops, oops, select model element. So basically we can select some element from the Revit. So if you go with select and you have, and if you hover over your room, you can find this room, right? And if you click it, click on it, you'll have this in Dynamo. And we have an amazing tool, um, uh, finish, boundary and if you want to explore the location of it you can click here on room and uh, you can find here all of the tools that you have that is uh, according to the room actually and uh, here you have finish boundary and if you select that and go with and if you feed feed that in you can you can see that you have four lines that is exa exactly what we have over here and we have the output of curve. So that is exactly what we want to have over here. So let's feed that in. 
but what actually an amazing thing about dynamo that here you can go with an amazing node element uh, parameters what it does that as you know we can click here on the room in Revit and have and see all of the parameters that we have but actually what I prefer doing is to go to Dynamo and use these element parameters and feed in our let's make it like that and uh, we can check out all of the parameters that we have so we have 51 parameters and uh, looking at it you can see that we have our wall finish finish and that is the wall that I want to use for my wall type uh, we have unbounded height and that is the height that I want to use for the height and uh, we have level and that is the level that I want to input here so basically we can extract the data from our room and feed all of this information to our wall and how can we do this so we have an amazing command um, get parameter uh, get parameter value by name and uh, what it does that you can fit in your element and extract some particular um, particular parameters so for example the first one will be our for example level let's go with level so we just the name of it is level as you can see over here and uh, I'm gonna be using code blocks and um, let's type level you can use string as an uh, alternative so you can use string it's, it's the same thing it's gonna work so here you can see it works the same and uh, so now we have extracted that information now as you can see oops okay let's clean this up a little bit so we extracted our level then we need height so and I'm gonna open this yeah and uh, here if we scroll down we can see we have unbounded height so let's type here unbound, unbounded height uh, actually it's case sensitive so make sure make sure you're spelling it right so it's really important and uh, I'm gonna select two of these and I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna you can uh, select two of these by holding shift key and then by holding control key you can drag it down and now the uh, parameter that I want to use is going to be our wall finish so let's type here wall finish so yeah now we have that information the next goal okay as you can see it's, it can be a little bit quirky and uh, the next goal is to understand what is the object type of it and what do I mean by that is that here we have height and it expects a double here we have level that expects a level like from the selection from from Revit and wall type the same it wants a wall type from Revit so height is just a number so here if you go and type here uh, object uh, object type and make three of them and uh, let's feed that in let's wire these together and here as you can see it's gonna tell you what is the output of this so the output of this is string so wall finish is not gonna work because here it expects a wall the output of the um, uh, height is double and here we have a double so that works so we can connect that so now how to deal with this situation so but if you go to Revit and go to the elements and find your wall but here you need to go to wall type you can see how you can create a wall type and here you have the option for by name so basically we have a string and if you feed that in you will have a gypsum wall type and you can feed that in it's as simple as that 
now I don't need this object type so and uh, to make it clear you can select these and type control G and create a group for it and let's type here wall that one will be for our height and uh, now with levels how you can deal with levels so you have a string and you need to have actual level and uh, what can we do is that we have a category so we can go with category and uh, all elements of category oops yeah so what it does that what I wanna to um, to put across here is that uh, we can select all of our levels we can select and let's make it to manual actually we can select all of our levels we can fit into the category and here if I type F5 if I click F5 is the shortcut for run if you hover over it you can see it so F5 type F5 and here we have two levels and of course it's not that reasonable in that case but when you have a lot of levels is going to make sense so what I want to do over here is to I have all of the elements of the category and I want to filter that out by this name so how can I do this I can get elements name I'm gonna explore everything in depth just in a little bit elements dot name what it means it just you convert elements into strings so if I type F5, F5 again, you can see that we have level one and here the name is level one. So th these two are just strings. <clears throat> and now we need to have a Boolean that says uh, whether it contains that or not. So if I type here contain and here we have string. So what it does it takes the, these strings, all of the strings that you have over here, level 1 and level 2. It's going to search for this level 1. And it's going to tell you if you type again a 5, uh, whether it's true or false. So what we, had, we have done over here, we turn this category of levels into just names and sort that out by this. So we have true and false values and now it's just a matter of going with um, filter uh, by bull mask and um, you can connect this boolean operation to the mask and now you can go to your category to your elements and feed that into the list and what it does it creates two lists in and out and the first one will be with our true value so as you can see there is our true value with the level of one but the difference between these two things will be that it's just a string it's just a name but that is a level is a category so now you can use that in and feed that in and uh, the problem that we are gonna face right now if I type F F5 run it will create all finish but as you can see as you can see it's going inside it's protruding into our wall it's going inside our structural wall as you can see over here so our goal is first things first is to kind of uh, can offset these lines and how you can offset these lines because here if you select your wall actually you can see that the location line is wall center line and if you go with com with the command wall you're prompted you're prompted to select whether you want to use wall center line or core center line but here it's it's going by default like that is it's a wall center line but we can change everything so what I want to show to you that we can offset this line that the boundary of our room we can offset this by the half of the thickness of our wall 
and then we can change the uh, <clears throat> the location line and it's gonna work for all of the um, all of the cases that you want to use that script so uh, let's continue doing that so our goal and uh, I wanna select all of these walls select uh, uh, all instances visible in view and delete them and for now I want to freeze I want to freeze that so every time when I click a five it's not gonna create a lot of walls so our goal right now is to deal with this room finish boundary uh, how can we do this so we have four 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 curves and um, our goal is to kind of our goal is to create poly curves so what does what do I mean if you type here poly curve you have an amazing tool offset so it's exactly what we want but the input of this is poly curve and uh, if you go to the poly curve options that you have over here you can find that you have three options how you can create a poly curve you can create that by join curves by points and by thickening curve in my case i have the only one option and that is the right one to go with by join curves so when i feed that in and click f f5 you can find that i have just here i have four lines and here i have just one poly curve with a number of curves and now i can fit in this poly curve to this offset one and uh, here we have the signed distance so the signed distance means that the distance allows for a negative or a positive number and negative number offsets inward to the poly curve and um, and a and a positive number offsets outward so basically the negative one is the one that we want to use and extend circular it just it's a boolean operation and if true corners will be made circular that is not what i want to use so i'm going to type here boolean and i'm going to go with false so it's not what i want to use but how we can get this distance actually the cool thing about it that we can work now on this wall type uh, on this wall type and use the same element get parameter by name so if i type here element no oh, not get get parameter by value uh, get parameter value by name uh, we can get the width of our wall so i can fit in my element my wall type and here type width and f5 and we can get the width of my wall and i can divide that by typing here in the search bar just a sign of division so like that and i can d divide that by minus two because we need to go like inward to the poly curve so connect this number and uh, type here <clears throat> minus two there we go if i type f5 it's exactly what we have and now uh, i'm gonna connect it to the signed uh, distance and uh, as you can see the problem if i type f5 f5 again uh, or you can just go with automatic um with automatic because you're not gonna have to type f5 all the time but i don't want my computer to lag so yeah uh, so now, now what you have is a poly curve and uh, the output is a curve and here is the curve also but the problem is we he here we just have a list of curve and that's it what we want to do is again create use this poly curve option why because then let me show you and I'll explain explain that poly curve again use this or you can just copy this one it's going to be easier and uh, fit in this curve type f5 you're going to get again these uh, four numbers of curves and now you have an amazing tool for 
poly curves curves that that is the tool that will divide your poly curves into just so if I type a five you're gonna get your curves with the um, and now they will be offset it so what we have done over here we just join these lines into one poly curve the reason for that because we needed to offset it and to offset that we need to have a poly curve and then we needed to get it back to that view to this type of structure so we have four lines for curves so and the way to do that we need to again join these curves and turn them into just simple curves just just turn them into from poly curve to to curves and now they are offsetted but we are left with the fact that we need to change the location line and how we can do that that we, we can unfreeze that right now and uh, we can get parameter from this so we can uh, get parameter value by name we can feed that in and uh, we can type here location line and uh, feed that in actually and uh, I can freeze that but if I type f5 yeah it's not gonna give me anything so I need to unfreeze that type f5 and uh, here as you can see it says zero the main reason being for this and actually now it, it, it has created because I run it but if you go and click on your wall as you can see it has just a list of uh, location lines and if you think and dynamo represent that the same way so wall center line is zero core is is the first one finish face exterior is the second one and finish face interior is the third one so we need to use that one finish face interior and that is the number three so if you go to your dynamo and here uh, what you can do is to not get parameter but set parameter by using this command you can fit in your, your element so my wall right so you can fit in your wall then you can say okay i want to change the location line and then you can type to which you want to save this and i'm going to use the number three and now if i go here and delete all of these walls and uh, select all instances visible in view and uh, don't forget of course to change the lacing here we need to change the lacing to longest and now if you gonna run it so if I go with run and I want to show you that if I go with F5 uh, as you can see it has again this problem and the main reason being for this because it can kind of if we go again visible in view and delete it and uh, if we try to uh, select some other element because sometimes that has some issues with that part and uh, if you select that one for example go with run it's going to give you a lot of issues and then you go with again and let's make sure that we have done everything correctly so yeah the division is to minus two yeah but I didn't load this thing yeah that is the problem that was the problem so we need to feed that in over here and now if I go with run and change the of course the element to the room so hover over your room click tab select room and go with run there we go so now we have our wall finish as you can see our gypsum wall board finish so that how that can be created and that's really cool and uh, now by having this script you can apply this to all of your projects and don't create it yourself but just doing that in one click so thank you for sticking because actually that's pretty much it for this tutorial so thank you for sticking up uh, for sticking to the end uh, make sure to subscribe and share this video and uh,
Thank you for watching and have a nice day.